the first thing on the agenda, as always, is uh, adjustments to the agenda. In our regular meeting, uh, we did not make it to uh, our executive session to discuss a, uh, a real an upcoming real estate transaction. So we will be adding that to the end of the meeting after public comment. We are also we did also did not get to public comment in the uh, initial meeting, um, which means that we will entertain public. You know, uh, the presentation uh, video that we'll play in a minute talks about how we're only supposed to be talking about the budget meeting uh, in public comment, but the public comment uh, at this meeting will also include uh, the topics at the at the the regular meeting which uh, included the uh, interim board uh, the interim board position, the COVID-19 uh, uh, reopening plans, um, as well as uh, the third item that I closed the agenda and can't remember. But I will, I will review that when we get to that point of the, uh, when we get to that point of the meeting. Um, so without further ado, um, Ray, can you play the, uh, the uh, video? Greetings and welcome, welcome to the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District, District Budget Information, Information Meeting, Meeting Explainer. Before, Before we get started in the details, details of the review budget, budget, a couple of housekeeping details about the vote. vote. The polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Tuesday, August 11th, in conjunction, conjunction with the Vermont primary. primary. Rochester, Rochester residents will vote at the Rochester High School, High School building. building. Stockbridge residents, residents will vote at the Stockbridge Town offices. Town offices. Absentee ballots, ballots can be requested be online at the Vermont, Vermont Secretary of State's State webpage or by, or by calling the Rochester and Stockbridge Stockbridge Town offices. Note that, that if you request an absentee ballot, ballot for the primary, primary that does that not automatically get you an absentee, an absentee ballot for the school budget vote. vote. That is that a separate election and requires a separate request. Our agenda is, is, the, is the same, same as, as our first, first uh, information meeting. meeting. We're going we to have, have a general review of the revised budget. budget. We'll have some board comments, and then we'll take questions and comments from the public. Before we begin, please remember that the board bylaws have rules about limiting public comment. Each resident of our district may offer one comment or question, and comments are usually tried to uh, be limited to five minutes. Board, bu board bylaws have rules about discussing private and privileged information, and this meeting is to discuss the proposed budget for our district, not building usage nor merger consolidation concerns. Our situation is this. The Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board organized a one-time Australian ballot election on, six, uh, on June 30th to uh, get a budget in place for the upcoming school year. That budget vote failed by, uh, or that budget failed by a vote of 141 to 110. Uh, at the Rochester Stockbridge uh, Unified District July meeting, the board did formally move to discontinue use of the Rochester High School building that's effective this school year. And finally, again, without a past budget, the district is limited to borrowing only 87% of last year's budget. Why is 87% funding a big deal? Because the board is limited in where budget cuts can be made. Items that cannot be cut include the uh, SU, the special education and our uh, middle school and high school students tuition, the tuitions we pay to the schools we send them to, which is 44% of our total budget. The 3% expected pay increases for the union personnel cannot be cut, as, as can uh, as the 13% health insurance increase cannot be cut. But 87% does mean that $573,000 would be need to be cut from our local programming, the only parts of the budget the board can control. The revised, budget, the revised budget's highlights are this. This budget spends $36,612 less than last year's budget. This budget spends $19,175 less than the voted down budget proposed in June because we've added preliminary operating cost savings from mothballing the high school building to this initial uh, uh, proposal. The resulting 1.1 cent equalized tax rate increase raises the annual taxes on a $200,000 Vermont homestead by $22 if the taxpayer is not subject to uh, Vermont's income sensitivity program. And finally, I wanted to give some historical context to the RSUD budgets as uh, have been uh, proposed over the last uh, three years, the last three budgets that have been the unified district budgets. 
The history of those budgets are, 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 are this. Each year, the board has uh, presented the taxpayers with a uh, $140,000 to a $235,000 uh, surplus, money that we did not spend uh, uh, in the previous year's budgets. Our expenditures in the two-year program, the first year we proposed a, uh, a unified budget, we asked for $4,251,494. Uh, two years later, we are only asking for uh, uh, just a little over $120,000 more, $4,371,950, which is a, just a 2.8 uh, expenditure increase over, uh, over that time period. When you adjust, when you look at the tax rate that, uh, that that we paid when we remove the merger incentive numbers, the initial tax the additional tax rate in the in the past fiscal 19 budget was a dollar sixty was one dollar sixty eight point seven six cents. Um, again, removing the merger incentives, the adjusted budget for fiscal 21 is one dollar and seventy point point five four cents. This is a, this means that our tax rate, when we adjust for the merger incentives, has only increased 1.1 1 .1, uh, uh, percent from the first RSUD unified budget through this this revised proposed budget. The board is really proud of being able to hold uh, that tax rate line, and is really grateful for all the work that the administration did in consolidating uh, uh, costs and uh, finding economies of scale to bring our two schools together after the merger. Thank you. Um, so first, I want to apologize. The, the audio and the narration was a little more broken than I would have liked. Um, I was having a very hard time getting, getting uh, YouTube to be cooperative with me. So instead of getting like a nice fade with, with a music and a sunset, you sort of got a, got a cut off. But I really do want to emphasize the, the point that I was making at, at, at the end of that uh, conversation, which is you know, we entered into this merger to uh, uh, try to, to, to to try to have the best um, educational opportunities for the kids in our two communities, and to try to find economies of scale and try to find ways that we could consolidate costs and share costs, and 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 do a better job of making sure that that uh, we got all the dollars we could to, we, we we could in front of the kids. And I think that last slide. Um, that points out that our very first budget that we proposed to the budget we're proposing for this year going forward, the three budgets, really, when you take out that it was eight cents last uh, the first time, six cents last year, and, the, or, uh, and then four cents this budget we're proposing now, um, really, we've gone up 1.1%. We really have found, despite whatever whatever disagreements you may have over the way that, that, that we've handled or tried to, been, uh, tried to be prudent and, and cautious um, around the buildings, I really do think it's important to note that the board, uh, the, the board's efforts have indeed kept the tax rate pretty flat. Um, 1.1 increase over two, 1.1 percent increase over two years, uh, I think is 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 not something you'd find in a lot of other communities uh, in Vermont, especially communities that are that are in our uh, you know geographical and uh socioeconomic circumstances does anyone else on the board have anything they they would like to add to the conversation or the administration well i'll just add that the principals have worked really diligently with the board i've come into this game late um but uh, I believe that this budget supports what we need in order to educate our students this upcoming school year. And that certainly the administration is going to be continuing as we get ready to launch into a budget process after hopefully an approved budget here next week around 2021 to look at how our system of supports can continue to find efficiencies um, at the local district, but also at the SU level. So. Those are all things that we're talking about already as we get ready to prepare for the budget process for 21-22. Carl, were you going to be getting yes, into? Yes, Carl, you're right. We're pretty Carl, were you going to be getting into um, the discussion we had earlier in July about the the Rochester building and the um, not using it for the educational purposes this coming year? 
Um, absolutely. Uh, I'm, and actually, I think, um, well, I, I, the, the, I think the board is very clear that, that from our point of view, it's not going to be used for, for, for regular educational purposes at all. Um, the administration is figuring out how best to, uh, and I, I guess Bonnie and, and Lindy can, can chime in with their comments, how best to uh, 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 move, move the resources they need out of that building and, and get, I mean, uh, building changes or not, this year, the, this upcoming year is going to be a, you know, a, a, a unique and odd year just because of the way that, that COVID and uh, our, our, our circumstances have things going. Um, I'm comfortable with the leadership that Jamie's given us in, and, 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 and getting info, information from Bonnie and uh, um, Lindy about how we're going to, to, to make that transition and get what we need out of that, that facility uh, and, and established into the new facility as, as, as best as possible. But I mean, I don't think we, I have not heard a, a, a lot of detail about that, but that's not, you know, it's not my, my job to micromanage. Bonnie, do you have comments? Um, basically, Carl, we're, we're waiting to see. So the answer would be yes, we are not using that building for any ongoing uh, educational purposes. Um, of course, that for next year is a moot point because with the pandemic, we, we couldn't go to the art room and music room. Um, we're looking at how to bring those programs into uh, the classes um, in the elementary building. But right now we're sort of needing to know how many kids are going to choose the online option and how many youngsters are going to choose the in-person option. Then we will know exactly what it is we're trying to plan for. Right. I guess the part that I was hemming and hawing around is I know there was some conversation about, um, if there were things that we could store over in that building to make more usable space in the elementary building and how that's, I know that there's, I'm sure Rochester family that want to know how that space is going to be configured and used. And I don't think we have answers yet or do we? Well, we definitely have stored some things over there. There's a, there are a number of items stored over there. Uh, there will be a few more items going over there once the teachers come back because we need to, uh, move stuff out of our classrooms to provide a sufficient space for social distancing. Our largest group at Rochester at this point is 15 kiddos, and that pretty much takes up a classroom. So, you know, things like bookcases and tables and things like that, they're going to need to be stored uh, in the high school. Right. Okay. And I mean, and that doesn't, I, well, we'll, 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 we'll address that as we get to that because um, that's certainly a, a valid use of space. Um, does anyone else have any questions or comments on the board or in the administration? Um, I'd just like to say um, uh, that we are doing due diligence about taking care of the building. Uh, Jamie gave us a report earlier in our meeting about a uh, meeting with some specialists about mothballing the high school building. And uh, we are proceeding in a confidential as is appropriate manner um, in discussions with the town of Rochester select board to um, uh, create a framework about a possible transfer. So just that these actions are ongoing, uh, we'll be talking about that again tonight. That's what the executive session is for, and that these, um, you know, we're very serious about uh, moving forward. Thank you, Ethan. Um, okay, are we ready to go into to, to public comment? Does anyone else on the board or the administration have any last thoughts? Okay, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to open up the list of everyone that's here. What I see for people on the phone is I see your area code and the last uh, uh, two digits of your phone number. So I'm gonna go down that. I'm going to ask you to identify yourself and the town that you're a, 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 a resident of. And uh, then you can, you, know, you can make a comment, you can ask a question. Um, it really needs to be relevant to the concept of the, the, the budget or the things that we discussed uh, in the uh, initial meeting, which were um, labor negotiations, 
um, and coming to an impasse uh, with the professional staff. Um, the process for getting the uh, interim board member on there, developing the interview questions, the fact that the board committed to uh, holding an election uh, to fill that seat uh, concurrently with the uh, presidential election on November 3rd. Lindy, correct me if I got that wrong, um, on uh, November 3rd. Um, but that will then that will be scheduling those interviews with the board's intention of getting that out of the way and making a decision by their regular September meeting for the interim uh, interim resident of Stockbridge who will fill that position until said November uh, uh, election. And then we also discussed um, the COVID-19 task force, as well as uh, Jamie's comments around the next steps in terms of mothball mothballing that building and getting that uh, getting that ready to go. So those are the areas that we can have public comment around. Um, so I will start with, and again, everyone is entitled to at least one comment. We are at pretty good time. This meeting was, you know, warned for an hour at least, and we're only at 7:23. So we certainly, if if uh, we get through everyone's questions in a timely fashion, I'm certainly willing to stay here for a while longer and, and take second or, or follow up questions. Um, that said, uh, we can move right into questions with the caller that is 802 star 38. Start to one mute. Carl. Hello. Ah, is this you, Keith? Yeah. Do you have Keith? me? Yeah. Hello? Yes, I hear you now. Good. You're okay. called. A um, couple of questions. Uh, the board's been very careful about using the phrase educational purposes when discussing um, the high school building. So my first question, which is a pretty simple one, will that building be used for any purpose whatsoever, whether by the school district or by another entity? Um, yeah, we just said, for example, we're going to be storing a lot of the, the spare furniture from the, from the elementary school in it to uh, to uh, um, get it out of the way to make to make room to have social distancing in classrooms, which means, for example, we have to have a higher insurance policy than we might if it was empty. Okay, but I noticed that the school is going to be used for voting. Why not use the other school? In other words, why not, as the phrase that was tossed around, mothballing the high school building? To me, when you mothball something, you close it down. You keep the minimum, the heat, whatever you need to do on a minimum. Granted, you're going to use it for some storage, which that storage is to the benefit of the school district. So that's fine. I just want to know for the record that for no, pur no other purpose, that building is not going to be used by another entity for anything. Um. The board, the, the, the board did not decide whether or not they were going to uh, uh, use or refuse um, the, the space for voting. I can say that in general, at least in my mind, when we were discussing that piece of it, where I was thinking about regular uh, educational uses, what I was thinking about specifically at the time was it gets used for a Suzuki music education camp in the summer that has very little, you're not turning on heat, you're, you're maybe opening some rooms and cleaning some rooms. And saying that it wasn't going to be used, period, seemed like it would be, it, it, it would be hard to go back and say, well, for this purpose that's being done in the summer where the expenses are small and we're getting an income for it because they're paying us a fee, um, that we might want to keep that opportunity open. Um, okay. I, I think that, I, I think that, Again, as, as, as far as, as, as voting was, was going, if that building was turned completely off and it had to be turned on part of it to, to, to vote, I'm sure that whatever negotiation was done between the school board and the, 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 the civil board of authority of Rochester, you know, to, to, to have that expensive paid for, the cleaning paid for. I know that, I don't know how elections have ever been held at Rochester, but back before the Stockbridge um, Historical Society was renovated, when we held elect elections in Stockbridge, the town of Stockbridge paid like a hundred bucks for the cleaning guy to come clean it afterwards. So there's at least some precedent of if a building is used for a municipal or civil purpose, it's not being put on the on, on the school district's tab. But I think that you know, 
uh, again, and you can, you, you, it, you, your personal feelings may be that I'm using weasel words. What I'm trying to say that is that- I didn't say that. I no, you didn't, you didn't. I'm, not, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be edit, editor, editorializing. What I'm trying to get across is the idea that we're trying to say that we will not be using it for schooling purposes while still giving the school board the ability to use it for something like a Suzuki camp, or if the civil board of authority said, you know, we'll pay to turn that on because we don't, we're concerned about COVID infecting the, the, the elementary school and using that for an election on a Tuesday when you might be operating school, something like that. I think it's, it's, it's really not trying to be, you know, vague or, 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 or wiggly. It's trying to say, we're not gonna use it for school and we understand we, we understand we don't want to just turn it on to have like a, a you know a, a dance or something silly you know that okay. just that we're, we're, we're we understand it's a municipal asset that we might need to use for a town for, for, for a beneficial purpose that we obviously get money for okay so for the Rochester town okay um, then just a question Rochester, I guess town, would pay, Rochester town would pay the school district if the, if if we if the Rochester town had to turn on the heat of that building, I would assume, and we haven't made any agreements yet, so I'm I'm, I'm certainly just talking from what I would expect in a, in a in a in a reasonable conversation, but we would expect them to, to to pay a fee to use the building, just like we expect the Gaysville Church to pay a fee to use the uh, Stockbridge Cafeteria for their their church back breakfasts in the past or Hunter breakfasts or whatever, you know, community wants. We have policies and procedures in place. To, to, to cover doing those. And I would assume that any use of that building by community groups would still fall under the existing or perhaps modified because we'd have to consider, you know, if it was a flat fee, I don't remember what our document is, but if it was a flat fee, we might have to raise that fee to bring the heat up or something. Okay, is there a, is there a, public, is there a, public, is there a public viewing of that document so one can read it? Um, yeah. Our policy, sure. Bonnie, do you have that? Can 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 one of you email that to Keith? Should be on the building use the policies and procedures, Keith. But I'm happy, Keith, if you email me, I can send it to you. That's fine. What's your email? Uh, Ray will. Well, you can't. Jay Canarney, K I N N A R N E Y at W R V S U dot org, and. Okay. Uh, I just want to put out there to the public. I am totally open door, so I've met oh, okay. with people I just to more, so please feel free to email, and I'm more than happy to get any information folks need. All right, and my final comment is that um, I, I know everybody thinks it's just about the money. It's not just about the money. I'm not so upset with the $4.3 million budget that you're putting forward um, and the, the caps that you've been able to uh, uh, put on the tax rates by your efficiencies. That's all great. I guess the point that I'm trying to make is the district right now is responsible for over 60,000 square feet of buildings. We have a student population of less than 140. I would love to see the high school close down, take the same money. I don't care if you, you save the money, put it towards the students, open up new programs for the students. But to just maintain a building that, by your own report, needs a lot of work. Why not give it to the students? Why, why keep this ongoing process of, of maintaining that building at the student's expense? We get that. And that's, I mean, that's, that's our ultimate goal. I just don't. I, I'm 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 feeling like we're not getting there nearly as fast enough as, as you'd like us to. But thank you for your comment, and I do I, and I, I do appreciate appreciate your patience, and I do I have to say I personally appreciate the fact that you know you've taken the time to 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 to, to, to engage with us versus you know um, just complaining about us uh, uh, behind your behind the back or on Facebook or whatever. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next caller is eight oh two star star four eight. Star six to unmute. Hi, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Uh, I'm assuming you were just referring to me, but <laughs> yes. I just would like to say that I agree with Keith and I think he made a really good point. And um, it isn't about the money. It's not about the money 
for me right now. It's about the promises and to shut the building down, get rid of it, whatever, because we just, the money should be going for the kids, and that's that's it. And um, that's all I'm going to say because I agree with Keith. Thank you, Keith, for bringing that up again, and um, and thank you for um, doing it in the process that you did. Evidently, other people don't. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm sorry, which town are you from? Is that was that you, Caitlin? Oh, was that Joanne? That was Joanne, as if you've never okay. heard my no, voice. <laughs> Julie, Julie recognized your voice. Julie was like, that's not Kaylin, that's Joanne. Uh, yeah. But thank you. We just need to have that, to have that on the record so that we know that, that you were an official speaker. And, and I thank you for curious why, why in the meetings when we're doing this, the public names or at least acknowledging that people were on the meetings aren't listed. They don't actually have to have their names, but maybe if there's 20 people that show up, you could say with 20 people um, responding or in the meeting as well. Because in 20 years, okay. if someone looks back, that's, a, at the that's minute, an interesting idea. I haven't. You know, we, we only... Well, I mean, yeah, and, and, it would and, be and, nice for people to know that people are engaging with this and are concerned with what you're doing. Correct, and, and 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 you're correct in that at a, at a at a physical meeting we always pass around that piece of paper, and, and we should be, be we names. should be passing around That's, the virtual piece of paper. Right, and it doesn't have to be names, but you could say twenty people were there or whatever. Yeah, yeah I have no, no, I have the number that, that, listed on the top of the call, Joanne. I can add that. Um, my only um, thing about adding some people that aren't that don't talk is that we don't have everyone's name. On the numbers, but I can add in. I see 19 showing now. I can add that into the notes. Okay. Thank you very much, Jenny. Bye. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, the caller at 802 star star 53 star six to unmute. Okay. Um, the caller at 802 star star 68. Do you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation? Star six to unmute. Thank you. The caller at 802 star star 97. Do you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation? Star six to unmute. Thank you, Beth Dolly. Do you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation? Can you hear me? I'm having trouble. Hi, Carl. It's, it's Beth. Beth. Um, I'm curious about the tents. How does that all work? Beth, Mr. Asking, Bowen, take it away, sir. Are you asking uh, about how we're paying for those? Are you asking why are we using them? I'm asking, I mean, I have in my head a picture of easy ups with sides and the kids are meeting there for their classes? That is correct. Okay. Quite. So that in social distance outside and um, as all the research is pointing to, that's a much safer way to have interactions. Um, and the idea too is that we can social distance and that would allow students also the opportunity to remove masks appropriately. So does that mean they'll be heated in the winter? No, that does not mean that. Um, what we're looking to do is learn from these first um, several months when we can be outside. There will be times that instruction still does occur outside in the winter. We're also working with some other organizations to gather winter clothing. But um, the idea would be that we're preparing for moving inside after the first trimester based on information we've gathered throughout the fall months. Um, it's an ease in transition. I think that it ensures that we have appropriate procedures in place um, for in-person learning to continue indoors because we know we will be transitioning to that as it becomes colder. I, I just thought it was a really interesting concept. And of course, 
the tents are up, but the buckets of sand aren't holding them up, and we're looking at maybe some high wind tonight and hoping they're not flying across the parking lot. <laughs> I hope not. That's the tornado did not hit, right? And uh, the tornado warning didn't hit in Stockbridge, I believe, because I see power no, on the house. They're still, they're still talking about high winds later on. Are they? Yeah. Uh, if I can uh, just uh, uh, say a few things. Um, I've been working with Bonnie and Lindy about, and um, Janet and um, the rest of the staff, office staff at the two campuses. Um, these are these are steel um, frame tents, um, uh, 30 by uh, 20 by 20. Um, we have a number of them, and the idea is they have sides, um, and we'll see. You know, we, we really never know what kind of winter we're going to get. Whether suddenly we're going to get a ton of snow, you know, late October, or whether you know uh, we might get use out of these tents well into December. Um, uh, that will sort of depend on it. The uh, buckets uh, were getting filled and the bucket rolls and the uh, uh, free, free, free. You're breaking up. I, I'm getting nothing. Okay. Yeah, Ethan, maybe try to see if that improves your audio. If you're all frozen. Is that better? Can you hear me now? It's a little better, yes. Now, would this be regular curriculum or yeah. is this a specialized curriculum? No, nope. yeah, I'll jump in on that. We are looking to implement our regular curriculum outside. And so we are definitely consulting on it with outdoor educators across the SU about how do teachers go about setting up appropriate routines and expectations so that we can implement core content both inside and outside. And so teachers are gonna receive professional development in that during in-service to ensure that they have the appropriate expectations set up for students. It's not just about outdoor ed, it's about core content being delivered outside as well. So I okay, actually appreciate you. that you asked that question, Beth. All right, thank you. Thank you, Beth. Uh, Brenda slash Steve Hillier. Brenda, do you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation? Okay, thank you, Brenda. Janet, oh, there you are. You seem to shift. Are you, uh, are you there, Brenda? Go ahead. Oh. You're muted. Control D or Command D or star six. There you go. Hi, hi, Carl. I don't have anything. No, I'm just joining for the first time. I happen to be off and awake. So um, it's all interesting. And I wondered about I wondered about the tents. You know, I wondered about the tents and and the budget. So I'm I'm all new to this again. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for your attention, Brenda. Okay. Uh, okay, let's go down to Janet Whitaker. Janet, do you have anything you'd like to contribute? No, I'm all set. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, that brings us to the end of the list. So if um, anyone else has anything to they'd like to say, um, you know, we're, we can uh, d d do this for another, you know, we're expecting to do this till eight. So we, we certainly have another 19 minutes in this. We also have an executive session to get to. So we would also oh, appreciate if-, quick, if uh, This is Joanne, I have a quick suggestion. You know how you talked about, we can't have the meetings okay. inside or whatever. Wouldn't it be cool to maybe use the, the tents and have a meeting where we all can get together under the tent? That's an interesting idea. <laughs> and then, and then I kind of the the like they're doing. Yeah, um, certainly, uh, certainly, especially if we're going to, you know, as we move forward with community conversations, those would work a lot better. Attend than, than than over a screen like this, where I'm looking at a bunch um, of you know initials and phone icons. Carl, uh, one comment. Hopefully, I'm not. Um, that's a very good idea, Joanne. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just uh, Joanne. Yeah. Um, 
I, I don't know exactly the configuration uh, uh, Lindy's planning for in Stockbridge, but I do know that in Rochester, two of these 20 by 20s will be put together. So there's one 40 by 20 space um, for some bigger class gatherings, but that certainly would be an option for a outdoor meeting for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Does anyone else uh, ha have any comments they'd like to add? Okay. Um, hearing none, thank you everybody for attending. Uh, thank you for all your continued support of our school systems. I really hope that we see you all out at the polls uh, uh, on the 11th. Um, to be honest, you know, exercising your, de your, your, dem your democratic responsibility to vote is important, whether you vote for me or against me. I, I really appreciate we all, uh, us all participating in, in, our, uh, in our democracy together. Um, we will now uh, adjourn for an executive session. If there is any action that comes out of the executive session, which I do not believe there is going to be, uh, that will get added to the recording, but otherwise, um, Ray, can you give us an executive session uh, meeting group that we can all we can all go to? Yep, It'll take me just a minute. Okay. In, in the meantime, so everyone, uh, everyone on the board, and uh, obviously uh, uh, Jamie and Tara and our and our principals, uh, look for Ray's uh, executive session uh, Google Meet invite for the rest of you. This meeting, uh, or I would entertain a, a motion for this meeting to be adjourned. I guess we actually, technically we cannot adjourn this because we have to still have the executive session. We're going to drop this meeting and uh, we'll uh, uh, go and have our, yeah. Correct. Thank you, everybody.